Hello and welcome to my fourth chapter of the hover building tutorial series. In this chapter I will be showing different parts of the construction of an actual hover and use that as a base for discussion about building plans, tips and tricks, armoring, weapon mounting, etc. I want to start by saying that you should not expect a normal let's build. This video is not aimed to show you how to build this particular hover, the one in the video, but rather to share things that will help you improve your build when making your own design. If you remember the first chapter about planning your build, I start by deciding what function cubes I plan to use. My plan is to make a base rusher. Initially I plan to have both blink and energy model, but I made a prototype and it was simply too fragile to be effective. So this time I will only use the blink module. You can of course test for optimal number of hover blades like I did in the first video using the in-game test mode by trial and error. However, this time I used a faster way. I simply made a spreadsheet with simple calculations where I can input the number of different cubes I want to use. The spreadsheet then calculates everything from total HP to total CPU, weight and lift power for me. When it comes to needed number of hover blades, I simply need to make sure that the lift power, where I circled in red to the right, is greater than uh, that of the weight uh, within a blue circle. A spreadsheet like this is easy to set up if you're somewhat accustomed to Office, or in this case, Open Office. So, we now have the estimated stats of our soon-to-be hover. We have the HP, the weight, we know how many hover blades we need, and we know what weapons and other equipments we will use. We also have some extra things like a radar jammer, steering thrusters, and the radar that are nice to have, but not really a necessity. So, in case we in the end need some extra CPU for, for cubes, armor, etc., we can actually decide not to use some or all of those things. A good way to plan the shape of your hover is to start with the gun placement. You want the guns to have good clearance and not shoot into each other while in battle. They also take up a lot of space. So placing them first, you get a good idea how long, broad and tall the hover need to be in order to place the guns in the way you want them. Sometimes you can manage a tight to fit by rotating the guns before placing them. Once you have the guns in place, it is time to find a good placement for the function cubes. You can experiment with different places for the thrusters to see what will fit good. Think about the points from chapter 3 where I talked about having the thrust slightly above center of mass and if possible quite close to the center line. Don't waste time placing cubes nicely at this time. Full cubes is fine at this stage. Uh, you might change the position of function cubes several times while building and you can work on the armor and use of cubes at a later stage where you know where the different function cubes are going to sit. I also think it's helpful to use full cubes to build the hover into roughly the shape I want the finished hover before I start to look at hover build placement. This will facilitate guessing where to place the hover blades in order to have a good spread of the weight distribution so that there is less risk that I have to move them a lot later on once I have armor and stuff on that took a lot of time to put there. Here I have placed the hover blades, a total of 11, although a few are hidden below the thruster and the gun in the center. I marked them pink in order to find them easily and spot them from above. I also have a bit more hover blades in the rear than in the front in order to make the hover a bit front heavy when finished. At this stage, and you should get here pretty fast since you just kind of made a rough sketch of the hover, it is actually possible to try and get a feel for it. If it at this point behaves strangely or start tumbling and is unbalanced, then you should probably start rethink trust and hover placement or even the whole design. You can also check that guns have a good clearance and somewhat how it will behave when climbing or going over rough terrain. The good thing here is that you kind of get this preview before you spend hours in making the hover look good and setting the armor correctly. It is now time to work on the armor, try forcing how guns and function cubes are connected and of course exchange all those full cubes for lighter ones. But first, let's take a look at some basic principles. Guns can be triforced in a bit different ways. If you choose to use rods or rod force when you connect your guns, then you want to make sure that the rod is not connecting to or close to something vital, like a hover blade, because if it does, the damage can spread from the gun through the rod down to those vital parts. 
Instead, you want the rod to be connected to some piece of armor that is not vital at all and it, you can lose without it affecting the hover's abilities. You can also do something called rod forcing when it comes to weapon mounting. You can place a sloped edge in the middle of a rod at the same place as the rod is, like I'm doing here. Now what will happen is that if someone hit that place, the sloped edge will go away but the rod will lose its hitbox, meaning all the rest of the shots will pass through the rods without hurting it, damaging the cubes behind instead. If you want to know more about this, I suggest you check out Baron Toto's video about this. And last of all, we got normal tri forcing around the gun mounts. What I do is simply place the cubes around the cube connecting to the gun in a way that you do not touch it. There are plenty of good videos out there on tri forcing. If you need to learn more, check them out. Now, let's get back to that hover. I usually start working on the bot just going from front to rear, exchanging full cubes for lighter cubes and try forcing as I go, working from below and from above and trying to get in between the different stuff and checking all the connection points. Sometimes I shift around the function cubes a bit while doing this, if I for example find it hard to get a good armor around them but often not very long from their original placement. I take a look at what guns I can rod force and I try force the rest. Also side note, rods are always nice. They got an incredible HP to weight ratio so if you can fit them without it causing problems, it's never wrong. A simple trick you can use to place cubes behind big function cubes where it's hard to, to, to find the space is that you turn off mirror mode, remove one of the function cubes, then turn on mirror mode and then you start placing the cubes. When you put them there and hold the mouse down, you can actually see if you can place it or not by looking at the other side on the function cube there and see if it turns red or not. This is very useful for example if you've got shields and you want to get in and fill up with armor inside the shield but can't really get there. I also experimented a bit with this bot, putting what you could call an escape pod into the bot. That is, there is a bit of what you could call a mini bot with the blink module in the center. So it's at roughly 25% of the total bot CPU. The idea here is of course that when you're heavily damaged, you should be able to kind of blink away and then escape to safety and regen. So this is the finished bot. I do feel I jumped quite fast here during the late stage of the construction. However, all that is just hours of me putting armor around the function cubes, cry forcing it and trying to make it look nice at the same time. I did not really have anything more that I wanted to point out. This also concludes my hover tutorial series. I hope you found it helpful. The bot is uploaded to CRF and it's called Prototype 2. If you have suggestions for things I should have talked about that you feel I have missed, please do suggest it in the comments. You can also check out the bot in action in my video called Base Rush. Thank you guys for checking this tutorial out.